Let us now pay attention to the third function of the U.S. Congress, oversight. I've already shown you this, the powers which Congress has in, to interact with the other branches of government, confirming nominations, impeaching the president, proposing constitutional amendments. So we have three branches, and today I will begin this presentation of the system of checks and balances, how the three branches interact with each other. So how does the legislative branch interact with the other two branches? Well, first, it controls money. And because it controls money, it means it, can, it has a huge power over the executive branch, which needs money to function. Then the Senate confirms appointments and treaties. So the executive chooses people, but they have to be confirmed by the Senate. Impeachment. Congress can even remove the president from office. Enormous power. And according to the Constitution, and this is something we haven't discussed much, Congress is in charge of organizing the judicial branch. In the Constitution, the only thing which is mentioned about the judicial branch is the existence of the U.S. Supreme Court. But the U.S. Congress organizes the rest of the system. So these are the ways in which Congress can interact with the other two branches. And we'll see that there are arrows going from the executive to the legislative and judicial branch, of course. Including the veto power, which we've briefly mentioned. So, a system built on negotiation and compromise in Congress and between the branches. And the question we can ask ourselves is, all right, it is meant to work thanks to compromise, but what if there is no compromise? This is the situation right now. We have a divided Congress. Rep Democrats have a small majority in the Senate, and they might lose this majority in 2014. And Republicans have a comfortable majority in the House of Representatives. So a divided Congress and the result, the result is a notion that Congress is paralyzed. On this cartoon, you have characters at Halloween saying, they say no bill that goes up that hill ever comes back down alive. The hill, Capitol Hill, the place where you find the US Congress. And this notion that Congress is unable to accomplish anything has become prevalent over the years. The United States are a divided nation. As you can see on this map, it's a two-party system, and you will find blue um, on the coast, red in the middle, plus small blue areas. It's a very divided country. And right now, uh, the US Congress reflects that. And because it reflects these divisions, and because um, the Republican Party in particular has become more radical over the years, uh, opposing everything which Barack Obama has been trying to do, opposing the Democratic Senate, because of all of this, well, the popularity of the US Congress is now very low. Uh, it reached at one point ni a 9% approval rate, meaning that most Americans are wary of Congress. They do not trust Congress. Congress does, is dysfunctional. It cannot do its job. It does not accurately represent the people. And more crucially, it cannot make laws. We're below sharks and contract killers. 
said Republican Trey Gowley in 2012. So everything is more popular than Congress. To conclude, let me say again that the main problem which Congress has nowadays is the fact that it is a bitterly divided institution. It is supposed to work through compromises, compromises within the US Congress, between the two chambers, and compromises between the US Congress and the other two branches. This is not what's happening now. <clears throat> Congress is so divided that it barely functions anymore. Yet, Congress is supposed to be the key element of government, according to the Constitution. It was designed to be the most important part of government, which means that the US have a serious problem uh, if that key part of government isn't functioning well. And that was the case in 2012, that was the case in 2008. It's very easy when you're a foreigner to focus on the presidential election, to focus on the personality of the president. But we should not forget that a president can only accomplish his mandate, can only do what he promised to do if he is backed by Congress. So in 2014, we have an opportunity to watch the midterm elections, elections in which only members of Congress are elected. And I s let me suggest that you should be paying close attention to this political campaign. 